Chapter 71 71. The Decision You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Do you want to die, Shantia? Monster Emperor Teras roared as he stood up and an oppressive aura spread everywhere in the place. Hold on, big guy. I am not here to fight you. We have an important matter which needed you to be awake and I tried waking you up, but since you weren't waking up, I had to use that method to wake you up. You can ask Balong if you doubt me, Monster Emperor Shantia quickly said. He isn't lying. Monster Emperor Balong replied when he saw Monster Emperor Terra's looking towards him. BDNV, what happened? Monster Emperor Terra's asked after he calmed down and retracted his aura. After so many years, another human was seen in our world. He is staying with the Banshee tribe. We need a proper plan about how to approach this situation, Monster Emperor Balong replied as he showed him Long Chen's image. What is there to think about? We need to slaughter him for the crimes of his ancestor. Monster Emperor Teras said with an angry voice. No. That would be the wrong way to approach this situation. Both of you know what a single human did to all our tribes in the Great War. If we go to another war, we may suffer the risk of complete annihilation. I think we should get in contact with him and try to establish a friendship with him. He is not the same one from a thousand years ago. He doesn't have any enmity with us and if we do things carefully, we may get him to be our ally. That way we won't have to take any risk that may result in a threat to our tribe, Monster Emperor Balong suggested. Are you crazy Balong? You know he is the descendant of a human. A member of the same species slaughtered most of our tribesmen before. My grandparents always told me about the terror our tribe faced when that human attacked us. I can never forget the looks on their faces when they described those events to me. I always wanted another human to appear so that I could personally wipe him out of existence and take revenge for our ancestors. Monster Emperor Teras roared as he heard the words of Balong, anger clearly visible on his face. We don't need to make the same mistakes our ancestors did by making that human our enemy. You know the survival of our tribe depends on our decision. Monster Emperor Balong said in a heavy voice. Don't change the story, Balong. Our ancestors made no mistake. They never offended that human. It was the human who interfered in our war with other tribes and started attacking us for no reason. Our tribe didn't even know that a species like humans existed in this world until he started attacking us out of nowhere. Monster Emperor Teras replied immediately. I agree with Teras. I also heard the whole story from my parents. Our tribe didn't do anything bad to that human, it was him who suddenly attacked us out of the blue, Monster Emperor Shantia said, voicing his agreement to Teras' statement. Exactly. He was a crazy maniac who slaughtered our people for no reason. How can you even suggest friendship with his descendant Monster Emperor Teras said looking at Monster Emperor Balong. I just don't want the same events as before to happen again. I care for the safety of our tribe. Don't let revenge cloud your judgment, my friend. Monster Emperor Balong said in a slow voice. Nothing like before will ever happen again. After hundreds of years of cultivation, we are as strong as our ancestors were. While that human is clearly weaker than that human from thousands of years ago. Monster Emperor Teras replied looking at Monster Emperor Balong. We need to slaughter him immediately, while he is still weak. Monster Emperor Teras asserted. I don't understand why we need to fight him. I understand why you don't want friendship with a human. But why go so far as to create enmity with the human that appeared? We haven't attacked any other tribe in the last thousand years and stayed within our territory. Even if we leave him alone, why would he attack us? Eventually, he will disappear like that human as well, Monster Emperor Balong declared. What if he goes crazy just like the last human did? In the last great war, that human attacked us out of nowhere. What if, after growing stronger this one goes crazy as well and attacks our tribe? Can you be sure that it won't be too late to stop him then? Monster Emperor Teras said fiercely. I like both of you, but I agree with Teras more old buddy. 
I apologize but I think we should kill him while he's still weaker to avoid future troubles. Monster Emperor Shintia told Monster Emperor Teras. But. Monster Emperor Balong wanted to continue, but stopped himself as he saw their determined expressions. He knew that no matter what he said, he wouldn't be about to convince Monster Emperor Teras and Monster Emperor Shintia. I have been sleeping for so long. It is time I get out and kill some insects. Monster Emperor Teras let out. I still think it is a bad idea, but I don't think you will listen to me. I just hope it doesn't cause our tribe to suffer another tragedy, Monster Emperor Balong said. Why don't you stay behind, old friend, just like last time when Ancestor Alton stayed behind? You stay here in case something unexpected happens while we go kill that kid and the other tribes for scheming against us with the human. Monster Emperor Teras replied as he walked towards the tunnel leading to the exit. Monster Emperor Shintia and Monster Emperor Balong followed behind as well. After half a day, they all entered the monster city causing a heavy disturbance in the city. I saw that the three great monster emperors were walking together. Something of grave importance must be happening. A monster with the face of a crow and the upper body of a bear said to his friend. I saw that as well. They were walking towards the monster palace. Our three great monster emperors haven't been seen together in the last hundreds of years. It was said that monster emperor Shintia and monster emperor Teras left the city and their whereabouts were a secret. Only monster emperor Balong stayed behind but he too was never seen in public in the last hundreds of years. His friend replied to him. I wonder what is going to happen. What can be so important that all the monster emperors appeared here together? Are we finally going to wage another war to conquer the lands? The crow-faced monster guessed. I think we will know very soon, his friend said, looking towards the monster palace. This kind of conversation was happening all around the city, with most of the people guessing that they were going to war to conquer the lands again. Somehow a crazy rumor also started stating that four of the monster kings had started a fight against the other six monster kings over an argument and two of the monster kings had already died. The situation was so bad that the monster emperors themselves came here to control the situation. No one knew who started this rumor, but it was started to spread widely in the city. Monster kings were sitting in the great hall still thinking about the options they had to handle, the situation involving the human and waiting for the response from monster emperors when the door was suddenly forced open. They all stood up and dropped down to a knee as they saw who it was. Rise. We already talked about the situation amongst ourselves and reached a decision. Prepare all our warriors. We will kill that human and slaughter the banshee tribe who are keeping him. Monster Emperor Terra said. Since both of you already decided to follow this path, I pray for your success, my friend. Since you are taking this step, our survival will depend on your success. I hope you are right this time, Monster Emperor Balong thought to himself as he saw the situation unfolding. One day had passed since the Monster Emperors declared their decision to wage war on the Banshee tribe and for killing Long Chen but he was busy with his own troubles having no idea of the situation inside the monster tribe. It was the fifth day since the red speck of light first appeared inside Long Chen's martial space during his cultivation breakthrough to the Gold Core Realm. After five days of crazy absorption, it finally stopped. However, by that time, most of the chi around the Banshee tribe was sucked dry. It even got to the point where the Elphia tribe and others were starting to feel its effects. Chapter 72 72, Red Core Realm You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. As soon as the insane absorption of the Qi into Long Chen's body ended, he fell onto the ground, dead tired. He was barely holding on after these five days. Long Chen was beginning to feel like he would not be able to hold on for even one more day, but thankfully, the phenomenon stopped on time. After resting for an hour, Long Chen woke up and dragged his tired body to his bed and swiftly, he fell asleep. He slept soundly for a whole day before eventually walking up. As he got up, he found Sun sitting on the bed next to him. About time you woke up. 
Congratulations on breaking through the Gold Core Realm, or should I say, the Red Core Realm, Sun told him with a gentle smile on her face. Long Chen sent his consciousness deep into his martial space to observe the changes that happened to it after he broke through. There, he couldn't help but be amazed by what he saw. There was a blood.red core rotating at the center of his martial space and above the head of his martial soul. It looked as if it was a blood.red sun, lighting up the entirety of his martial space. His martial soul stood below that red core, his eyes were still closed, but Long Chen noticed a slight change in his martial soul. Before breaking through, his martial soul looked like the 12 year old boy whom he transmigrated into. But now, although it looked similar in terms of facial features, it was clearly older and taller. It used to look like a kid. However, now it looked like a teenager. There were some changes to the armor of his martial spirit as well. His old, completely golden armor now had various patterns embellished upon it, all red in color. Long Chen noticed that the patterns looked similar to the patterns that Long Chen saw on the walls of the Bloodline Temple, the place where he entered in order to participate in this test. As for the sword in his martial soul's hands, although it remained mostly the same, somehow it now looked sharper and even more threatening. Long Chen again turned his attention back to his core to observe it carefully. He was shocked when he saw three black lines already visible on his core. He immediately brought his consciousness back as he stared at Sun. There are three spirit lines on my red core. Did I actually broke through to the third stage of gold core realm in a single attempt? Asked Long Chen with a shocked expression written all over his face. Long Chen knew that in the gold core realm, a person's core will have something called spirit lines on it. Just as how a cultivator at the first stage of the gold core realm has one spirit line, a ninth stage gold core realm cultivator would have had nine spirit lines on his core. Although his core wasn't golden but rather red. He couldn't help but be shocked and he saw the three spirit lines which had appeared on his core. That's right, you're a third strange gold core realm cultivator now. If you couldn't break through to the third stage of the gold core realm, after emptying most of the chi in the nearby areas, then wouldn't your talent truly be trash? Said Sun gave a light chuckle as she said to Long Chen. Amazing. I've never heard of someone breaking into the gold core realm at twelve, won't I be a miracle if anyone in our kingdom finds out about this? Long Chen smiled as he said, well. Actually. Sun looked like she wanted to say something, but stopped herself. What is it? Long Chen asked with curiosity. Ahem nothing, Sun said. Hmm, I'm in the gold core realm, but I don't have any suitable techniques I can use in this realm to fight gold core enemies other than seven forms of saint sword. Do you have any martial skills you can teach me? I'm sure that Tianshan's storage space inside this ring must have many awesome techniques. If only you could allow me to take a peek, said Long Chen slyly. Good try. Of course, there are many strong martial skills in there, but no. You can't access Tian Shen's storage space. Sun said. As for teaching you a skill, well. I do know quite a bit of skill but I can't teach you anything at the moment. You'll be getting many martial skills after you're past this trial as a reward but other than that, I can't give you any martial skills myself as that would be considered as me directly involving myself to help you in this test and that would break the Blood Temple's rules. Sun said in a serious voice, a direct contrast with her former attitude. So I can't learn a new martial skill before passing this test. Long Chen asked with a downcast expression. I apologize, but I can't help you with that, Sun told him. It's fine. I still have my old techniques. Although they won't be as effective as stronger ones, but with my gold core cultivation, I can at the very least bring out the best in them. Said Long Chen, radiating positivity. Dot Sun couldn't help but smile radiantly as she heard Long Chen's words. It's about time I get to work and do what we are here to do. Long Chen said looking at Sun. This mask has a time limit of 10 minutes, so I need to steal that orb in 10 minutes or I would be recognized. Wait a minute. I remember now. 
It has a limitation of 10 minutes, but this limit increases with the increase of the user's cultivation. Since I'm currently in the gold core, it can last twice as long. Ah. I almost forgot the most important part, Long Chen struck his head with a light punch as he remembered a rather important piece of information. Since I now have more time, I won't need to take as much risk as before. At first, I was planning to go within a hundred dot meter radius of the orb's location without the mask, disguise with the mask on and enter to steal the orb. But now I can do it slightly farther away from the actual heavily guarded location, Long Chen said with a happy smile. Long Chen got up from the bed and changed his clothes to his newer ones. After preparing himself, he exited the place. The maid which was still standing outside started following him as Long Chen walked ahead. You don't need to follow me, just stay there. I'm just going for a short walk in the hall and I'll be right back. You don't need to go back and forth with me as I'll be returning here soon, Long Chen said, but. The maid tried rejecting Long Chen. No buts. Why don't you get rest while I take a walk? You've been standing here all the while. Go inside my room and take a rest. The bed is really comfortable, you know. If I need anything, I'll wake you up when I'm back, replied Long Chen swiftly. But going inside the guest's room when he's not inside is against the rules. She meekly rebutted. If anyone knocks, don't open the door and no one will know. I'll be back soon, said Long Chen as he touched the maid's back and gently pushed her into the room. The maid felt a current storm through her body as soon as Long Chen touched her back, her cheeks turned red as she stopped thinking and entered the room. Long Chen immediately departed. Chapter 73 73, Caught You are listening at NovelFull.audio Long Chen had found out from Prince Alton the location where the Banshee tribe kept their orb. It was a temple behind the royal palace and it was heavily guarded. Long Chen learned from him that the whole temple was completely surrounded by the royal guards. One could only enter after going through a thorough check, that too only if they had been given a token by a royal family member. Only members of the royal family could enter without any checks or formalities. Long Chen continued walking in the direction which would lead him to the exit. Every time he noticed someone ahead of him, he would change his looks to that of a normal servant, walk by and quickly turn his face back to save the usage time of the mask. On his way to the exit, he also passed by the queen, who didn't even glance at him as she just saw a normal servant. Just to exit the palace, he had already used the mask for over five minutes. After exiting the palace, Long Chen immediately found an empty spot as he swapped his clothes with the princes and used the mask to alter his look to that of Alton's as well. His hair turned snow.white while his face changed, looking a little pale. After a few seconds, there was practically no difference that could be seen between Long Chen's looks and the princes. All the royal guards saluted as they got down to one knee as soon as Long Chen reached the entrance of the temple. To them, it looked as if their prince had come to visit. It feels good. Thought Long Chen as he smiled and entered the temple. Without wasting any time, he ended his transformation. Long Chen saw that there were two doors in the hall. He decided to enter the right door and found himself standing in a cold room covered with snow, of which at the center resided a white orb giving a chilling feeling. Dilviko, this must be the orb for the law of snow that the Banshee tribe practices. The orb for the law of slaughter must be in the second room. Since I'm here, I might as well take it. Long Chen immediately kept that orb in his storage time as he exited the room. Without thinking much, he entered the second room, only to find a transparent crystal lying there. This whole room felt completely different from the previous room. There was no cold, no hot, no wind and no sound. Long Chen felt like he was in a completely isolated space. Hmm it seems different from the previous time. It's not the law of slaughter but. Sun said, we can talk later once we're back in the room. For now, we need to get out of here immediately. If someone comes in, we'll be in deep trouble. Long Chen interrupted her as he immediately kept the orb inside his ring and hastily exited the room. 
He used the mask and altered his face back to Prince Alton's as he exited the temple and left. The guards continued guarding the temple as usual without knowing that someone stole their tribe's treasure. The guards usually checked every person who came out of the temple thoroughly so that this kind of theft doesn't happen, but this didn't apply to the royal family since, well, they ruled all the land, hence owned this tribe's treasures. There was no need to worry about them stealing what they owned. Long Chen returned to his room soon after. He opened the doors with the key he had and found the maid soundly sleeping on his bed. He closed the door and walked towards the bed. Soon after Long Chen left the temple after stealing the orbs, Queen Mia arrived and entered the temple. Everything feels weird since the last few days, I can't even feel the tiniest bit of chi now. Since I can't cultivate at the moment, maybe I should instead improve my understanding of the law of ice. Everything might just return to normal by the time I come out. She muttered as she entered the right door inside the temple. But as soon as she saw the empty room, her face turned red with anger. Guards. She screamed with killing intent clearly embedded in her voice. The guards immediately rushed in as soon as they heard their queen's voice. Who stole my snow crystal? Why the hell am I keeping you all here if you can't even do your job properly? Roared the queen in rage. She suddenly thought of something as she quickly ran towards the door on the left. She entered it, but to her misery, she found it empty as well. The guards kept staring at her in fear as she came out and gave them a deadly glare. Who was the last person that entered this place? The queen asked in a heavy tone. Your Highness, half an hour ago, Prince Alton entered and left soon after. One of the guards said, Are you trying to say that my nephew stole my crystals? The queen said with anger written all over her face. Why, Your Highness, you can ask anyone here, Prince Alton was the only one who entered the temple before you came. I don't dare say that he stole the crystal, it's just that he was the last person who entered. The guards continued. All the other guards gave her the same statement. Although the queen simply couldn't believe them, she couldn't call all of them liars either. Go and stay in the prison, I'll punish you myself when I'm done with this. The queen said as she left. She walked towards Alton's room. The queen knocked only once on the door as it was soon opened by Alton. Little Alton, why did you go to the temple today? Asked Queen Mia with a gentle smile. Temple. What are you talking about, aunt? I didn't go there today. In fact, it has been months since I last stepped there. Prince Alton answered with a confused expression. Oh, that might have been someone else. I guess they mistook someone else for you. You can go back to what you were doing, she said as she turned back and left. Instead of going back to her room, she started walking towards the guards on the corridor and asked them if any of them saw Alton leave the room. All of them denied. Alton didn't leave his room. Furthermore, he had absolutely no reason to steal the crystals as he could have accessed them any time he wanted. The only one who would do this is that human. Since I denied him access, he chose to steal the crystal for himself. The guard said that Alton entered the temple half an hour ago, it's possible that what they saw was a fake Alton if that human has an ability to create illusions or shapeshift. Who knows what kind of strange ability he used. I'll only get answers there from him. Her mind raced as she walked towards Long Chen's room. As Long Chen entered his room, he intentionally made some noise to wake up the maid who immediately woke up, startled, and immediately apologized for falling asleep. After a while, the maid exited the room and Long Chen was left alone. We need to get out of here since our work here is done, Long Chen muttered with a smile. I should tell the people that I'm leaving or they'll think that I stole the orb and escaped once they find out about the missing orb. Although they'll doubt me when that happens, they'll doubt me even more if I sneak away, thought Long Chen. Long Chen opened the door, but just as he was about to leave, he found Queen Mia standing right in front of the door. Queen Mia, what are you doing here? Said Long Chen with a smile on his face. Chapter 74 74 All of you forced my hand you are listening at novelfull.audio. 
return my crystals that you stole. We let you stay here, right in our palace and you steal our stuff. Queen Mia said in a loud voice, scaring away the nearby maid. What crystal? What are you talking about? I didn't steal anything. Long Chen said as he feigned ignorance. You, come here. Queen Mia pointed at the maid as she called her. The maid came forward with a scared expression. Don't worry, I won't do anything to you. Just tell me honestly, was he here in the room for the last hour? Queen Mia asked. No your highness, he left for a walk a while ago, and only returned around half an hour ago. The maid turned her head towards him for a moment but decided to tell the truth. You let him go alone. I never expected such negligence from you. Cut off one of your fingers as punishment so that you won't make this kind of mistake ever again. Queen Mia bellowed, what the hell are you saying? I just went for a walk and I was the one who told her not to follow me. You don't need to punish her for that. Long Chen rebuked her. But he was shocked to see that the maid actually cutting off one of her fingers with tears in her eyes as she desperately held herself from screaming in pain. You can go now. Queen Mia said to the maid. Back to you, both of my orbs were stolen today, and the thief disguised himself as Alton to such a degree that none of my guards could even recognize that he wasn't. You're the only person who might have had such an ability. What's more, it also happened less than an hour ago. The exact time you went missing. I'll ask you kindly now, just return the orbs, and I won't punish you. Queen Mia said slowly as she suppressed her bubbling anger. Firstly, I didn't steal anything. Secondly, you're just blaming me without any proof. Who knows if anything is actually stolen, it might just be an elaborate plan for you to destroy my reputation in the other tribes just because you don't like me. More importantly, are you even qualified to punish me? Long Chen said with a smile. Since you're accusing me wrongly, I have no reason to stay here anymore, I'm leaving. Long Chen said, as he started walking away. You think you can simply leave after taking my treasures? Foolish. Completely drowned in anger, Queen Mia brought out an ice spear and attacked Long Chen with it from behind. Long Chen immediately brought out his mountain destroyer as he turned back and blocked the attack. I've had enough. Don't you dare make me angry. I don't want to leave your tribe in ruins and strewn around with corpses. Long Chen roared in anger as he pushed back Queen Mia with his sword. Queen Mia brought out a crystal which she crushed. An alarm blared throughout the tribe as formation runes started shining. The whole tribe was soon wholly covered in a transparent barrier. Everyone looked towards the barrier as chatter started erupting amongst the populace. Isn't that our empire's guarding formation? It prevents enemies from entering our empire. The only drawback is that no one from inside is able to exit either. Right, although this barrier only lasts for one week and yet takes thousands of years to be recharged and used again, it is said that not even monster emperors can break it in less than a week. Last time, it was used in the great war against the monster tribe. Are they attacking us again? Of course that must be the case. The queen won't be wasting this formation on something weaker than a monster king, people in the crowd kept on commenting. Long Chen left the palace and looked at the barrier. Don't think that just because I didn't fight you inside the palace, everything's resolved. I just don't want my palace to suffer from damage. Queen Mia's voice came from behind. She was still firmly gripping an ice spear on her hands, looking much like a snow queen. Queen Mia attacked Long Chen again as he was walking towards the barrier but this time with much more power. Long Chen blocked the attack with his sword and created some distance between the two of them. I guess this means you're not going to let me leave peacefully today, Long Chen said as he rushed towards the queen. He could see that his speed had increased explosively after breaking through to the gold core realm as he was able to move at such an incredible speed even without using a movement technique. Long Chen swung his mountain destroyer at Mia, who attacked with her ice spear as well. Long Chen felt the cold chill coming from his sword as soon as it came into contact with Queen Mia's ice spear. 
While Long Chen only felt a slight chill, Queen Mia was in a much worse situation, she felt a heavy pain in her arms as she was pushed back. Long Chen again swung his sword at Queen Mia but stopped midway as he immediately stepped aside. A spike made of snow crashed right where he was standing before. If he hadn't stepped aside, he might have been hit. Long Chen turned to look at the person who attacked him from behind and found Prince Alton standing there. You too. Long Chen said with an upset expression. I thought you were a good person like Master Tian Shen. But I was wrong. A good person wouldn't have attacked my aunt. You are a bad human. You need to be punished for attacking my aunt. Alton said as he stood there, his expression frosty. All the warriors of the Banshee tribe came forward to help the queen as well and without thinking much, they all attacked Long Chen. Long Chen saw all this happening in front of his eyes and couldn't help but get angry. I wanted to leave this place peacefully and not have to do this. But all of you forced my hand. If a blood path is the one I must walk upon, then on it I shall tread. Long Chen said as he deflected the attacks rushing at him with his mountain destroyer. Ice prison. The queen pointed her spear towards Long Chen and used her martial skill. Four thick ice walls appeared around Long Chen, completely engulfing him. The opening at the top was closed as well as a thick ice slab formed on the top of the walls forming something like a room, albeit a deadly one. The four walls started closing in on him slowly but surely. Is that the rumored ice prison of the queen? It is said that it's one of the strongest skills of the queen. All four of these walls can take the full dot-powered attack of a monster king without breaking and can even kill a monster king. Someone from the crowd commented, amazed as he saw Long Chen trapped. I've only heard about her using this skill against a monster king in the last great war and killing him. But then, using this skill harmed her own vitality as well and she had to recuperate for a month before she could take part in another battle but by then, the battle had already ended, another continued. You can't break it. Now be buried in it until your flesh crumbles into smithereens for the sin of stealing my orbs. Queen Mia said, smiling as the ice prison continued to compress. It started to enter the ground as if to bury Long Chin eternally. Chapter 75 75 Kill you are listening at novel full dot audio. Suddenly, the decrease in dimensions of the ice prison seemed to be much slower. In fact, it looked as if the walls couldn't even move an inch inwards despite how much they tried. The smile on the queen's face disappeared as she saw this scene. She started to have a bad premonition. Her premonition soon found its mark. With a loud bang, the top of the ice prison was broken as Long Chen flew up to the sky. There was a golden sword in his hand radiating brightly while being surrounded by a dangerous sword aura. Long Chen had taken out his king's sword, which seemed as if it was happy at being chosen for this fight. Queen Mia coughed up blood as her ice prison was broken through by Long Chen. Her already pale face turned even paler. Dot, I've already given you many chances since I don't want to fight, but all of you chose to ignore my words and kept on attacking me. As if that wasn't enough, you even tried to kill me. I would like to congratulate all of you. You've received what you vehemently asked for, your deaths. Long Chen said in a deep voice. To Queen Mia, every single word of his was like the declaration of a death sentence. Seven forms of Saint Sword. Second form. Devastation. Long Chen muttered, as he made a giant slash with his sword, moving towards Queen Mia. Queen Mia clearly saw the attack coming towards her since she tried to block it with her ice spear. Be that as it may, she didn't even have any strength to attack after her ice burial was broken. I won't let you hurt my aunt. She's the only family I have left. Ten walls of ice appeared between Long Chen and Queen Mia as Alton made his way between the two of them, trying to protect her together with the other guards who surrounded her as well. However, even their combined strength failed to stop Long Chen's attack, which was supplemented by the power of the king's sword as well as his own strength. The ice walls broke apart without even the slightest resistance as the attack struck Alton, 
who didn't move from the front of Queen Mia, the momentum hurling him far away. A large wound on his chest could be seen, neither his life nor death known. Long Chen stood there in place, looking at the bleeding Alton. You idiot, Long Chen muttered, his expression grim. He came down to the ground and walked towards the queen, whose eyes were wet with tears as she stared at the unmoving Alton. Some of the guards standing near her couldn't help but take a step back when he saw him coming towards them. Though they held their ground and didn't run away. It's time for us to show our loyalty to the Empire and protect the Queen. One of the guards roared as he mustered all the courage he had and ran towards Long Chen with a sword in hand. After seeing one person move, everyone else started rushing towards Long Chen as well, attacking him with their weapons. Despite their effort, before they could even get near Long Chen, he disappeared from his original position and appeared right behind their backs. I admire your bravery and love for your kingdom, but I'm sorry to say that the kingdom you chose to protect is now on the side opposing me. I'm still going to give you a chance to stand down, or you'll die a needless death. Long Chen said slowly as he continued walking towards the queen, not even sparing a look at the guards. Most of the guards decided to run away, leaving only one, who against all odds, still decided to attack Long Chen from behind with his sword. A sword flashed and a head fell to the ground after being decapitated. It all happened in the blink of an eye. There was a brief moment of silence as everyone looked at the scene, their eyes filled with disbelief. Wrong choice. A voice struck everyone's ears, sending chills down their spines. The Imperial Guard's body fell to the ground as blood splattered everywhere. Long Chin kept on walking towards the Queen, who looked at him with a frightful expression as tears continued to stream down from her eyes. I, please forgive me. I have made some stupid decisions, you can keep the orbs. I, I mean you didn't steal anything, it was all a misunderstanding. I accidentally kept the orbs somewhere else and blamed the great master. I hope you can forgive the foolishness of this little one, the queen said slowly as she begged for forgiveness with tears in her eyes. I told you that all I wanted was to leave and not hurt anybody. It was you who kept blocking my path and attacking me. Isn't the enmity between us already clear? I've already experienced many situations where, even after showing mercy, I was attacked from behind. The latest example is lying there. Long Chen said as he pointed towards the headless body of the guard who attacked him. I want to completely eradicate your existence, but I'll leave you with your puny life since Alton had sacrificed himself for you. Long Chen said with a thoughtful expression as he took a look at Alton's body. But then, just like what you did to that maid, you too deserve a punishment to always remind you of what you shouldn't do. Long Chen said with a heavy tone. After a few moments, Long Chen left his previous spot and walked towards the barrier with one of his hands still holding his king's sword, with the other holding the ice spear of the queen. The crowd looked at him with a frightful expression as if they were looking at a demon. Behind him, the queen was roaring in pain as two dismembered hands lay on the ground near her. They were her hands and the punishment Long Chen had decided upon. Long Chen completely ignored her screams of anguish as he walked towards Alton's body. After inspecting it, he determined that Alton had died. You were the only one who helped me in this tribe, albeit unknowingly. You are gone now but I would still like to say, thank you. I'm truly sorry for killing you, it was not my intention to do so. However, I accepted your last wish and left your aunt alive. So, rest in peace, little friend. Long Chen muttered as he stood near his dead body with a heavy heart. Long Chen turned away and without looking back, walked towards the barrier. Chapter 76 76, Destroying You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Long Chen turned away and without looking back, walked towards the barrier. He threw a stone at the barrier to test it. The stone couldn't pass through and dropped to the ground. Observing that the barrier only prevented things from leaving, he couldn't note anything else noteworthy. He turned towards the populace and his eyes fell on someone. You. Come here. 
the guard instantly fell to his knees when he realized Long Chen was calling him. Please, don't execute me. I, I have a child waiting for me at home. The guard said, frozen to his place as tears streamed down his cheeks. His gaze was on Long Chen. Don't fret. I'm not going to kill you. Had I needed to, I could kill everyone present without moving from this spot. You just need to come here, Long Chen sighed with frustration at the guard's words. After hearing Long Chen summon him again, he got up and staggered towards Long Chen. What do you know about this barrier? Long Chen inquired. It's our empire protecting barrier. It is meant to be used only during emergency situations. Usually, when we are under attack or facing a strong enemy, the barrier helps us stall them while we prepare, he replied hastily. Interesting. What else? Long Chen asked, his gaze settled on the guard. It, it can only be used once every thousand years as it needs a massive amount of energy to be used. Hence, it uses up the thousand years worth of energy that needs to be accumulated once again. Once the barrier is erected, it lasts for seven days, during which not even monster emperors can break it, he finished. Hmm seven days huh? I can stay here for seven days and waste time, but I don't want to stay here a second longer. After all, it's a place where the queen herself tried to destroy my reputation by accusing me of being a thief. Long Chen's voice boomed as he used his qi to amplify it. Hearing his statement, the public started chattering softly amongst themselves. That's what happened. The queen accused him wrongly. Somebody amongst the crowd let out. It might be true. I saw the queen ask him to return her treasures and assault him first. Anyone would react this way if they were attacked and falsely accused. No wonder he retaliated. I am confident that even great master Tian Shen from thousands of years ago would have been outraged as if somebody accused him like this, another person whispered. That must be it. Why would he lie? He is so powerful that if he liked something, he could have just taken it by force. He would not do a shameless thing like stealing, right? A girl in the crowd said. Dot Long Chen, who was listening to the crowd chattering, had a slight smile. But as soon as Long Chen heard the girl, his face turned beat dot red and he coughed in embarrassment. Sun started to laugh at this scene as she emerged near Long Chen. I told you to take the path of the brave, but you chose the shameless one, she said. Long Chen was glad no one except him could see or hear her. You can go now, Long Chen told the guard, ignoring Sun's continued giggling. Long Chen took a few steps back before crouching into a fighting stance. Seven Forms of Saint Sword First Form Cleansing Long Chen assaulted the barrier with his martial skill. Nothing happened as the attack landed on the barrier. It remained intact, not even a scratch to be seen. This barrier is really solid, Long Chen muttered as he inspected the area of impact. Let's see if I can shatter you with my strongest attack or not. If I can't, I'll just wait in this tribe for seven days, Long Chen thought as he prepared to attack again. Seven Forms of Saint Sword Fourth Form Desolation This was the strongest attack he had learned so far. An arc of light dot filled with sword aura bolted towards the barrier. Everything that fell in its path turned lifeless as the contents disintegrated completely. Although the barrier didn't shatter on impact, Long Chen couldn't help but smile. He saw a small crack materialize on the spot. It's clear that you are not invincible. I'll see how long you can last. Long Chen declared. He struck the crack, making the crack grow even deeper. Long Chen estimated that with two more strikes of the same intensity, the barrier would break. Only a bit more and I can leave, Long Chen thought as he continued his assault. Seven Forms of Saint Sword Fourth Form Desolation The Arc of Light struck again. The barrier tried its best to withstand Long Chen's attack, but couldn't even hold on for five seconds. It shattered into thousands of pieces like glass. 
Yet the light from his attack didn't dematerialize completely and continued to move forward, cutting down the trees in its path before disappearing completely. Ha, finally. Long Chen muttered with a gleam of joy. Long Chen did not walk towards the barrier. Contrary the crowd's expectations he went in the opposite direction. He appeared in the same spot after a while. Only, this time he was not alone. Long Chen sat on the Elphia horse that Xia and Tara left to ease his travel to the Elphia tribe. When you gave this horse to me you said that it was nothing special. But as it turns out, it is a really helpful gift, Long Chen thought with a smile when he remembered Xia's words. The horse galloped, taking Long Chen away from the tribe, bringing calmness back to it. Some guards rushed forward with the royal physician to inspect the queen's wounds. Although her hands could not be restored, the excruciating pain was elevated. A few hours before the battle at Banshee tribe, a monster concealed himself in the forest a long distance from it. The creature looked identical to a gorilla but with green fur and a menacing horn at the center of its forehead. He glared at the gates of the Banshee tribe and kept an eye on all those who went in and out. He was Monster General Beck, the one who had informed the monster tribe of Long Chen's existence and appearance. What the he asterisk asterisk is transpiring here? Why did the Banshee tribe use their life dot saving formation? Do they already know I am hiding here? Wait, even if they did know, they wouldn't waste the formidable barrier on me, Monster General Beck muttered as he gawked at the barrier. What? It broke so soon. Shouldn't it last for a week? Is there something wrong with it? He was shocked to see the formation shatter. A few moments later, Monster General Beck grew alert upon seeing Long Chen speed out of the Banshee tribe lands. He watched until there was some distance between Long Chen and him and followed the human. His whole team stalked the human alongside their general. Chapter 77 77 Hunting You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Monster General Beck started following Long Chen with his whole team. Long Chen took the same path that his entourage had taken while they were escorting him to the Banshee tribe. He had already memorized the complete set of directions to get to the Elphia tribe. After traveling for a while, he reached near the same stream they crossed before, but this time, he didn't stop. Instead, he increased his speed making the horse jump high in the sky. Enjoying the rush of the wind on his face, he soon landed on the ground on the other side of the stream and continued on his journey. Monster General Beck and the others also kept following from behind, keeping a safe distance between them. That was until Long Chen suddenly disappeared. Hmm, where did he disappear to? General Beck thought. He was shocked as Long Chen suddenly disappeared from his sight. They continued ahead, thinking that Long Chen reached too far ahead that they couldn't see him. Hence, General Beck traveled for over half an hour as fast as they could, but he still couldn't find Long Chen. You lost him, huh, maybe your stealth was a little too lacking that he couldn't help but find out what you were doing to him. Someone suddenly said from behind. What the hell are you talking about? Are you courting death? My stealth was perfect. General Beck shouted as he took out his blade and turned back to see who it was that dared to talk to him in such a disrespectful manner. As soon as General Beck turned back, he saw a little black dot-haired boy sitting on a horse, looking at him with his attractive golden eyes and an evil grin on his well-dot-defined face. He was utterly shocked to see the human he was chasing appear behind him. Long Chen looked at his constantly changing expressions with a smile on his face. You. How? Wait, where is everyone else? General Beck found that other than Long Chen, there was no one else present. He looked around but found none of his subordinates there. Oh, are you looking for your friends? I saw them lying on the ground behind us when I was coming here. I think there is something wrong with them as most of them were bleeding and some even had their heads missing. Wonder what happened to them. Long Chen said with a thoughtful expression. You can probably find them if you go backward for about ten minutes, Long Chen said with a smile. You dot you killed them. He roared in a loud voice as he stared at him with a shocked expression. 
me. Why is everyone blaming me today, that too for things I haven't done? I didn't even touch a hair on them. Look at me. Do you think I could kill such strong people? Long Chen said with a hurt expression. Stop toying with me. I know you killed them. He said with his body trembling in both anger and fear. Before Long Chen could even reply, Monster General Beck made his move. His horse started to gallop forward rapidly. With a blade tightly grasped in one hand, Monster General Beck focused on storming ahead as he increased his speed. But against Long Chen's expectations, the direction Monster General Beck was going in wasn't towards him but was in the exact opposite direction. This person could silently appear behind me and kill so many of my people without me knowing. As I thought, this human is dangerous. I need to escape fast and survive. Monster General Beck muttered as he kept increasing his speed. Huh, I thought he would get angry after seeing the deaths of his subordinates and attack to avenge his subordinates, but he proved me wrong, he ran away. What a poor leader. He doesn't even think about his subordinates. I guess that's a monster for you. Long Chen muttered as he saw Monster General Beck escaping. Oh well, I've already killed so many bad people, one more name to the list won't hurt much. It's time to hunt. Long Chen muttered as he started following Monster General Beck on his horse. The distance between Long Chen and Monster General Beck didn't increase by much as the horse General Beck was using had speed similar to that of an Elfian horse. However, Long Chen didn't mind the ever dot constant distance as he knew that he could kill Beck whenever he wanted. He was just enjoying the chase, toying with Beck in the process as he was going in the same direction as his destination. After three more hours of chase, Monster General Beck suddenly shifted his direction and continued advancing forward with Long Chen in tow behind. Oh man, what a stupid guy. He's going in the wrong direction. I guess it's time to end this. Long Chen muttered as he skillfully stood up on the back of his horse with the horse in motion. A beautiful pair of wings appeared on his back. One golden and another black, beautifully contrasting each other, the black side making him look like an angel fallen from grace, tilting towards darkness while the golden side made him look like an angel of light who ruled the heavens and opposed all darkness. Long Chen flew up to the sky, but never towards Monster General Beck. Only after reaching a high altitude did he go after the Monster General. Long Chen's flying speed was many times faster, as he soon closed the distance and flew above the unaware Monster General's head. Ha, huh, looks like that demon gave up. Now, I just need to maintain this speed and get out of this place and out of his reach. General Beck said smilingly after looking back and not finding anybody following him. Ouch, that hurt you know. But since you've already called me a demon, I might as well act like one, a voice came from the sky as General Beck was focusing ahead. He involuntarily shuddered in fear. The voice was somewhat familiar. He looked up towards the sky in the direction of the voice, but before he could even react, a sword impaled his head. His eyes were still wide open as he died staring at the one who killed him. He fell from the horse, dead, while the horse kept on running. Without wasting any time, Long Chen plundered General Beck's belongings and stuffed them in his ring as he flew back to his horse. Soon he found his horse in the distance and continued on his journey ahead. Night arrived as Long Chen decided to rest and feed his egg. Just as he did in the real world, he set up his hammock on the top of the trees and started taking out the egg he received. He started feeding his chi to the egg, which continued absorbing it. Long Chen again felt some movement, but he ignored it as it was already the third time. Long Chen knew that whatever is inside will soon come out. After the egg stopped absorbing the energy, Long Chen put it back inside his ring as Long Chen started his cultivation. While Long Chen was cultivating, in a faraway place, the city of monsters stood tall. But this city was anything but peaceful today. Every monster of the city is preparing for battle except the kids. Dot everyone donned their armor and gripped their weapons in their hands as they stood tall, waiting for the order to depart. 
the monster emperors had already ordered their armies to be ready for departure at any moment's notice. All three monster emperors came out of the palace, followed behind by ten monster kings. While monster emperor Teres and monster emperor Shintia looked gallant and excited for the war, monster emperor Balong's expression looked more solemn than ever. Chapter 78 78, where you are listening at novelfull.audio Everyone turned their attention to the monster emperors and monster kings as they came out. They stood straight, their minds alert. Citizens of the brave monster tribe. I'm happy to see all of you prepared for the impending war and attend the conscription without being consumed by doubt because of our last failure. It is finally time we get our revenge. Monster King Shintia said with determination. Although he used a mild and calm tone in delivering his speech, every person could hear him clearly. When I say revenge, I don't simply speak about the tribes you think of. I also mean the demon that slaughtered our innocent citizens in the Great War. The demon who orphaned our children for entertainment. It is because of him we live in fear of extermination. Yes, that's right. I am talking about the human called Tian Shen. Monster Emperor Teres announced loudly. Chattering erupted in the crowd. Silence. Monster Emperor Teres shouted, quieting the people. Monster Emperor Shintia continued. I know what you are thinking. That human disappeared thousands of years ago, so how can we get revenge? Can he still be alive? He looked around the crowd at the hesitant expressions. Even our ancestors couldn't hurt him, how can we, who are even weaker, get revenge on him? If he is still alive, he must be stronger now. We stand no chance. I will clear your doubts. Monster Emperor Shintia said slowly and quietly. Yes, you're right. If Tian Shen were standing in front of us, we wouldn't be able to scratch him, much less exact revenge. Over the thousands of years, he would have grown stronger beyond belief and we would stand no chance against him. But things are different now. We have been given a golden opportunity to avenge our people. Although the demon Tian Shen hasn't appeared, one of his descendants has. We must not be scared of this human. No. We must rejoice. Rejoice, for another human has appeared. He is but a child and weaker than Tian Shen. He is our opportunity to redeem our name and wash off our losses. No one shall call our tribe weak any longer, Monster Emperor Shintia declared. This is our opportunity to rewrite history. In this version, the human and slaughtering tribes will be defeated and we shall rule the world. Will you follow me to fulfill this dream, the dream of the monster tribe? Monster Emperor Shintia roared as he raised his fist above his head. We are. All the monsters chimed, mirroring his movement enthusiastically. It's time to set out. Everyone must remember this. This is a war against the world. Our goal is to destroy everyone who stands in our way. Whether it be the human or the banshee, any tribe that stands in our way shall be slaughtered. Monster Emperor Terra shouted. In fact, his voice was so loud that the entire forest surrounding the city could hear him. The army set out with the two monster emperors, while the monster kings followed hot on their heels with their own troops. Monster Emperor Shintia rode on a heavily armored horse, while Monster Emperor Terra walked on his feet, unable to take on a humanoid form. However, he didn't fall behind. Instead, he walked steadily so that the horses wouldn't be left behind. Old Terra, why don't you let me ride you? I am already trying very hard to keep up with you, Monster Emperor Shintia joked. Sure. You can try, but you'd be courting death if you tried. So, I'd suggest you change your mind. I wouldn't want you to miss out on a war because you got killed by my hands, Monster Emperor Terra replied in an annoyed tone. I was only joking, old man. You don't have to be so serious. Monster Emperor Shintia laughed. It would have been better if old Balong joined us too. He'll miss out on a ton of fun, Shintia said as he glanced at Terras. Let that stubborn guy stay in the tribe. He's too pessimistic. 
is there need to be scared of a human child. Balang is worried that our young will be purged again. So, he wanted to stay back and protect them. Anyway, we won't need his help. It will be easy to eradicate the human and the tribes. Monster Emperor Terra snorted as the army continued marching forward. Soon, morning arrived. The sky brightened magically in this world that lacked both the sun and the moon. Long Chen stopped cultivating. He had already broken through the peak of the fourth stage of the Gold Core Realm after a night of cultivation. He looked at his resting place and started to pack the hammock. He placed the hammock back inside the storage ring and continued on his journey, unaware of the events that had transpired because of his presence in this world. He moved forward for the whole day and by the time light disappeared and night arrived, he had already reached the gates of the Elphia tribe. The horse had been of great help in the journey. The guards recognized him immediately and allowed him entry without checking his body or identity. He was easily recognizable. Seeing the familiar old scenery, Long Chen couldn't help but have a small smile on his face. Without wasting any more time, Long Chen strode to the tribe leader's residence. L.RG the horse arrived near the tribe leader's courtyard and slowed down into a trot. Long Chen, who was on its back, got off the horse and made his way to the door. He knocked and waited until an old man with a full head of white hair opened the door and allowed Long Chen inside. The man probably did so because he didn't want to be discourteous. Where's Ten Sha? Long Chen asked as he beamed, a wide smile on his face. Master is in the study, reading. I'll go and inform him that you've returned. I'm sure he'll be in a hurry to see you again. The old man smiled back as he spoke. No need to find him. I know exactly where the study is located. I'll go to him myself. Long Chen declared, still smiling. He walked inside before the old man could answer. Soon, he was standing in front of the study. The door was closed, so Long Chen used his divine sense to peek inside the room. What he sensed inside shocked him greatly, to the point that his face contorted into a grimace. He had never imagined that in the short time he would take to return to the tribe, this would happen and he would stumble upon such a scene. Chapter 79 79. That it's not the law of slaughter you are listening at novel full. Audio. Chapter 79 79. That it's not the law of slaughter Long Chen could see a naked Tensha reclining on a seat while an Elfian woman who wasn't wearing anything either, kept thrusting her hips in a vertical manner on his lap. Long Chen instantly shut off his divine sense after sensing such a lewd scene. Long Chen chose to merely knock on the gate. Dot, what? Berg. Is it? A voice alternating with heavy panting and moaning came from within the room. It's me. Are you busy right now? Long Chen asked deliberately. A loud crashing sound came from the inside as soon as Long Chen's voice was heard. Ah. Great Master Chen. You. I'll open the door shortly, Ju. Just wait a moment. A voice hastily replied from inside. Don't worry about me. Take your time, I will wait for you here, Long Chen let out an answer. Shortly, the door was opened by Ten Sha, who by then was already properly dressed. You must like reading a lot since you are always in the study, Long Chen asked smilingly as he entered the room and strolled around. Ah. That's right. I really do like reading a lot. You know what people say, right? Books are the gateway to the world and the way to escape from it. Huh, Ten Sha replied while laughing nervously. That's true. Anyway, what's she doing in your escape? Long Chen pointed at the maid, who began cleaning dust off books. Oh, she. She is just here to clean the room. Ten Sha replied. What is she tidying up? As far as I can see, she's dusting the already clean section of the room, Long Chen pointed out, teasing the nervous man who was desperately trying to hide his recreational activity. Just as Ten Sha was about to be rendered speechless and his whole affair uncovered, Long Chen continued speaking. Anyways, 
I don't have time to chit-chat. I'll be going to your temple to cultivate for a while. I don't want any interference, so don't let anyone inside the temple. Long Chen decreed as he left the room. All right, Ten Sha answered back without thinking. Wait a minute, I was so caught up in hiding my affair that I didn't even remember to ask him why was he back, and what happened in the Banshee tribe. Ten Sha hit his head as he remembered. He hurriedly ran to the back of Long Chen. Master Chen. Ten Sha called out as he saw Long Chen almost on the verge of leaving his house. What? Long Chen asked with an expression of curiosity. I apologize for taking your time, but I can't help but ask what is it that happened in the Banshee tribe, and how come you're back here so soon? The Banshee tribe is more luxurious than we are, and what's more, they have what you need. What actually happened there? Ten Sha raised multiple questions at once. Why does it feel like you want me to stay in the Banshee tribe and not here? Long Chen asked with a smile, his tone indicating the rhetorical meaning behind his question. This. Of course not. I was just curious about what happened there as you yourself wanted to go there. Ten Sha changed the way he phrased his words and inquired again. Nothing major happened there. The queen rejected me access to their orbs. Besides, I didn't like that place and started missing your tribe, so I came here. I decided to study your orb instead. Long Chen said while smiling. Oh, although I feel like you left out a lot of details, but I understand. You can go study in the temple, I will order the guards to not let anyone near our temple until you come out. Ten Sha said with a smile. You're more sensible than the queen. Long Chen said as he left the residence. What did he mean by the statement that I'm more sensible than the queen? Ten Sha thought. He called his personal guard and told him to ensure that no one enters the vicinity of the temple or creates noise around the area. After the guards left hurrying on a horse, Ten Sha left the house as well and walked towards Deputy Chief Su's house. Long Chen continued walking and soon reached the temple. All the guards were informed of the decision of the tribe leader by his personal guard, who reached the temple first as he traveled on an Elfian horse. Long Chen effortlessly entered the temple as he closed the door. Hey, Sun! Long Chen called out. What? Sun shortly appeared near him as she said. I've just thought about something. Since I've received this bloodline, as a guardian spirit, although you can't hear my thoughts unless I intentionally want them heard, you can still see what I see, even if I don't want you to, right? Long Chen asked, looking at Sun. That's right. I see what you see. Sun said as if she was stating a fact while she kept moving her little head up and down. So you saw what I saw earlier today as well? Long Chen asked as he looked at her. I saw everything you saw, what are you talking about, she asked, feeling confused. The thing I saw happening with my divine sense, Long Chen let out. Oh that, yes I saw. So what? She asked with a confused expression. Can you shut off your senses when you want to, so that you don't see the outside? Long Chen inquired. Yes I can, but I never use it as I don't like the feeling, Sun said innocently. You should do this for a little while when I'm having private time in the future. You're so young. You shouldn't see such things. Long Chen replied with a serious look. Oh. I shouldn't ask things. Like the thing I saw when you were riding behind that girl from the Elphia tribe. Sun asked, smiling. Th that was an innocent reaction and nothing vulgar like what we saw before. Long Chen coughed one with a red face as he said seriously. Don't worry little guy, I only look young but I'm way older. As for the things you're talking about, I've already seen it happen many times. I've seen Tian Shen do this hundreds of times with the girls he fell in love with. Unfortunately. Sun said but stopped herself midway. Oh. You're so old but still watch young people make love. Aren't you quite shameless yourself? And here you were calling me shameless for stealing the orb. Long Chen couldn't help but laugh. 
you can't change your words now. You've already confessed that you can shut your senses and also confessed that you saw Tian Shen do that with his lovers many times, Long Chen said smiling. You. It was Sun's turn to turn red as she tried to find words to say. Leave that. I already know you're shameless. You don't need to give justification. Anyways how old are you? Long Chen thought. You don't need to know that. Just know that I'm older than you. She replied in anger. Don't be angry, I was just messing with you. Anyway, can you tell me the best way to learn a law? I already have the orb for law of slaughter here, Long Chen changed the topic as he brought the transparent orb out from his storage ring slash, that's what I was about to tell you in the Banshee tribe when you said that we'll talk when we're back. She said with puffed up cheeks. Oh right, isn't it a good thing we escaped there fast. As someone found out of the stealth soon after. Anyways what were you saying? Long Chen asked. I was saying that isn't the orb for the law of slaughter. Sun said with full confidence. Chapter 80 80 Bad news you are listening at novel full dot audio. I was saying that it isn't the orb for the law of slaughter. Sun said with a face full of confidence, shocking Long Chen. What are you talking about? Are you saying that Ten Sha lied to us about the orb that Tian Shen had studied from being there? Long Chen asked, that can't be it. I remember that when I met Queen Mia, I clearly asked her to grant me access to study the orb Tian Shen studied from. Although she denied me access, she never once mentioned that the orb Tian Shen used wasn't there. That's what I was thinking about as well. I don't think any of them lied. One of the possible explanations might be that someone stole the original orb and put the one you're holding there. Sun replied while looking at Long Chen. There's also the possibility that the Barong tribe didn't give them the orb you saw Tian Shen use and instead gave them this. There's no way the queen could ever tell which orb Tian Shen actually used, so tricking the unknowing queen could be pretty easy, Long Chen said with a thoughtful expression. That's true, that might actually be what happened, as fooling them was easier than stealing from them. Sun said with an enlightened look. We can only guess what happened. To know the actual truth behind it, we'll need to meet them ourselves. I'm also curious as to why they would have three orbs, the orb Tian Shen used, the orb for the law of wind that they use and the one that they gave Queen Mia. I'm also curious as to why they lied to her and have her be given a different law orb than the actual one. Long Chen muttered while looking at the translucent orb. Anyways, we can do that later. First things first, tell me, is this orb any good or do we need to go to the Barong tribe right now and get the one you talked about? Long Chen asked Sun. You don't have to worry about finding them, as I don't think this law is any less valuable than the law of slaughter. In fact, it could only be stronger. Sun said as a smile bloomed on her face. Stronger. What law is it? Long Chen asked with a curious look on his face. Of course I'll tell you, but since you don't know much about laws other than the basic ones, I'll have to explain them to you first. Sun let out a response. You already know about the five basic laws. Law of fire, law of earth, law of wind, law of wood and the law of water. While people with the law of fire can control the element of fire, those with the law of earth control the ground and the same goes for all the other elements. But other than these five elemental laws, there are many more laws in this world which are categorized as special laws. Sun explained. I remember that you told me before that the law of slaughter is a special law, Long Chen responded. Right, but that wasn't the proper description. What I didn't tell you was that the special laws are further separated into different ranks. There are lower dot rank special laws like the law of snow that you stole from the Banshee tribe. Then, there are intermediate dot rank special laws and finally high dot rank special laws. The law of slaughter that Tian Shen comprehended was a high dot rank special law. Sun explained. Oh, then what rank is this law? Long Chen asked. There is another layer above high dot rank special laws. 
the supreme rank laws. If I'm not wrong, the orb you're holding contains a supreme dot rank law. Sun told him. What the? Long Chen's mouth opened wide as he was rendered speechless and just kept staring at Sun. Can you please tell me what law it contains? After a long pause, Long Chen asked. It's a law that contains the whole world and yet it is the law that contains nothing. This orb contains the supreme law of space. Sun explained. Long Chen just kept staring at the orb blankly before turning his attention to Sun. The law of space. If that's how it is, then tell me one thing honestly. The stronger the law, the tougher it is for it to be comprehended right. Long Chen asked with a smile. Yup, you're really lucky. I've only seen a few people succeed in cultivating the law of space. You're really lucky you received this orb making it easier for you. Sun said with a slight smile slash oh really. Aren't you forgetting something? Long Chen said with a smile. Me. What am I forgetting? She asked confusedly. Right now, we're trapped in this world, with the only way to escape being by learning law in this world. A basic law that in your words, only genius gold core realm cultivators can learn. And here you are congratulating me on receiving a supreme law, three ranks higher than basic laws. To that, I'll have to ask you, how long will it take to learn a supreme law based on your calculations? Long Chen asked as he looked at Sun with a smile that continued to widen. The people who comprehended the law of space before you took over 500 years to gain the initial comprehension. But since you have this orb to help you, if everything goes well, you will probably comprehend it in less than 100 years, Sun replied innocently. Long Chen faced dot palmed himself as he heard her reply. So, I need to stay in this room for the next 100 years to get out of this world. What bountiful luck I have. Long Chen then laughed as he found his situation funny. Whatever, if that's what it takes, I'll do it. Besides, a supreme law will be a good compensation for the troubles I'll have to go through. Long Chen muttered as he looked up. That's a good boy. As long as you don't lose hope, you can achieve anything, Sun encouraged Long Chen slash, wait a minute, I have a question on my mind. Are there laws above supreme laws? Long Chen asked while looking at Sun. Of course there are. There are ancestral laws above the supreme laws but you don't need to know about them currently. Sun said. I have another question. If this is a trial, then where are the difficulties? If we have an infinite amount of time to stay in this world, then even the stupidest of mankind will learn a law after trying for hundreds of years. Where's the challenge in that? Long Chen asked curiously slash, oh, that's some good observation you have there. The truth is, you don't actually have an infinite amount of time. You know that while you're here, your real body is still in the real world, and considering the difference in the speed of time between this dimension and the real world, if you don't want to be an old man by the time you get out, you should probably be fast. If you take too much time it's even possible that you might die of old age in the real world while you stay twelve in this realm. Sun explained. Long Chen's expressions contorted as her words reached his ears. Eddie E.T.